So we'll just kind of give that to everybody, uh, just kind of an honor. Them is also, if you haven't already found the table out front, you can drop off a gift, a card, just anything, a letter, um, just to know to just say how much you love them and appreciate them. And uh, in, just, in, in just a few moments, we'll actually honor them. But I do just want to read us a scripture. In Psalms 113, it goes on to say that, Who is like our Lord? What I love is in Psalm 24, it says, Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. As I'm thankful this morning that we serve a God, that He is mighty in battle, that he is strong and there is nobody like him, that he is the king of kings this morning and he is the Lord of lords, that there is nobody that compares to him, there's nobody besides him, that he is mighty and strong. And so this morning, if you need a God that will just go before you and fight a battle, guess what? You came to the right place because we serve a God that is that, that it is in his character, it is in his pedigree, it is in his history, that it is in him that he is mighty in battle. So if you're thankful for him, can you just stretch a hand to heaven as we invite him in this morning? Lord, we love you. God, we thank you for this morning, God, that you are above every other. The God, that you are strong and mighty, that you are mighty in battle, that there is nobody like you, oh God, that you are Jehovah Jireh, that you are Jehovah Nisi, that there is nobody like you in all the earth and all the heavens, and it's in your name that we pray. And everybody said, amen and amen. Hallelujah. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It made my heart in love, and wrote my name above, and just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus, tell him all about our trouble. Just a little time. 
talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our trouble. Hear our pain is crying and survive our morning you're facing something that's bigger than you it's bigger than you and you need help we're going to sing it again i feel the presence of god in this house this morning and let me tell you something if we'll talk to him i said really talk to him from our hearts he can help you this morning as we sing this song we'll sing the first verse i want you to come and stand across this front and say lord it's bigger than me today take it take it well i once was lost in sin but Jesus took me in and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It made my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Hallelujah. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble.
Go to the Lord in prayer right now for a young lady by the name of Evelyn. Also, James Martin, Carl Hessler, Rebecca Hendricks, Ty Mackey, Michaela Smith, Mary Martin, Neil Hayes, Bob Ackenberry, Mom, Everett Stacy, Shirley Pierce, Gene Gamble, Belta Eatman, Don Sebo, Maria Dunning, Odessa Mathis, Jim Calvin, Chris Barnes, Sue Hamby, Jessica, David Akins, Bethany, Anna McCullough. Jaquetta Maxwell, David Falkenberry, Solomon Drew, Maggie Fouts, Linda Poteet, Bob Few, John Allen Dunn, little baby boy needs a miracle, Brenda LaBella, Annette Blevins, Dale Whitecotton, Angie Lohman, Dina Gullick, Dauber Gamble, Eldora Sweever, Gail Greenwood, Rick Wilkins. Also for the Cox family, uh, Matthew Cox, brother passed away and having a service today. The Christenberry family had service yesterday. Chadwick family, service for uh, Brother Tracy will be here Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock. If you can come, I encourage you to come and encourage this family at this time. And all the other needs. You have a need, let's just slip our hands up right now. It's just believe in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come to you. You're the author and the finisher of our faith. You're the healer. You're the deliverer. You're the comforter. And Lord, we're so thankful, Lord, that we can go to you. Oh, Lord, you're our everything today. And we just speak life and health and Lord comfort. Is only you can give in Jesus' name.
Turn your heads right over here to this corner. Right there is some great resources. We love those children that's with us today. I want to give all our visitors and these kids a hand. <laughs> Amen. We love you. You may be seated. Ushers, would you come? Remember tonight's service at 5.30. Encourage you to be faithful to the house of the Lord. Wednesday night, 7.00. Thursday prayer, a lot going on in the next few weeks, so I encourage you. Uh, Sister Glenda, you know where the offering bags are? You guys can go ahead and uh, look at the people until they bring you bags, okay? Stare them down. Stare them down. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give. Lord, I thank you for your love, your mercy, Lord, for your provision. Lord, take what we have today and multiply it for the kingdom of God. And we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. I'll go, these guys over here are ready over here. Passionate, shepherd, earnest, genuine, leader, encourager, godly, shepherd, unwavering, humble, grinder, real, devout, compassionate. Fifteen to eighteen years, four years, twenty plus years, at least fifteen years, ten years. Nine years. 20 plus years. 14 plus years. Five and a half years. Mm -hmm. Six years. Five and a half years. 20 years or more. 12 years. 10 years. And I have known him since he's probably just got out of high school. Him and Kim was the dating. And he impressed me then as being a really good kid. Whenever we came, we were a struggling family, and he opened his arms wide for us to come in. A number of years ago, I became very ill and ended up spending four months in rehab. And during that time, Pastor came every single day to see me, minus four, minus four. But he came to see me to the point that he was there every day, and the staff at the rehab thought he was my son, and I could think of no greater honor. Kim and Brian both have been there through thick and through thin when things are going good and things were going bad. When I first came here, how you made me welcome, like I've been here all my life. When my husband died and and we were on our way to the ER and Zach called the pastor and he almost beat us there. He was there about five minutes after we got there. And my husband was in the hospital and he came up to see him that night and he had to go to Oklahoma City to see another patient. And I told him, oh, I, you could come back in a day or two. He said, I'll see you in the morning. And I said, you get, need to get some rest. Well, what happens at nine o'clock that night, my door opens and he steps in Tracy's room and he says, hello. I got on to him for not getting any rest. Well, it's way before daylight the next morning. I thought the nurse was stepping in, and who steps in but Brother Brian with a big grin on his face, and he said, looked at me, and he says, get up and comb your hair. 
uh, his prayers, his love, and compassion. I have a pastor that is a friend, and I have a friend that is a pastor. He has an unbelievable heart. He's the best man that I know. He just was with us through the whole thing. Um, he was just a, a stabilizing presence, you know, when our world was crumbling around us. And he was just, um, his presence just gave us comfort and peace. And his prayers meant so much. And, and he was just, just the pastor he needed to be, that we needed at that moment, like, like never before. And I just appreciated it so much. One night I was, Kim was visiting her mother and I was visiting my dad and they ended up having to take my dad into the ER and she left and went with me and I told her, it's going to be a long time before we'll be back. We'll probably be here there all night. She said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. She said, I'm with you. She said, I'm going with you. So we went and before we got home, before we got back, the sun was coming up. She was with me all night. And I just wanted to know I really appreciate it. I love both of them dearly. I see how he prays for everybody, and I appreciate him. I was up at the altar praying, and uh, he came up and spoke something over me. And uh, I went up and asked him after church. I said, hey, why did you say what you said? How did you know that? He said, I didn't, and I don't remember why I said that's what the Holy Ghost told me to say. That's the most impressive time, Brother Ross. He's always there when we need him, no matter what, whether you call him or not. It just seems like he knows that he's needed. He's there. It, it's, it's just in person or in prayer. We can always depend on our pastor. When I was substituting for another teacher, there were some cute little seventh graders in that class. And he was in the ninth grade at that time. He was rather tall for a ninth grader. He had a head full of hair. <laughs> kind of changed since then. But I didn't pay him much attention, but I heard all these little seventh grade girls whispering. And they were getting all excited. And finally I heard him say, oh, there he is. <laughs> and He's been making an impression on people ever since. And I could say a lot more, but I'm not going to. I'm afraid you might get the big head. <laughs> Well, it, I, you know, I don't even know where to start, but I say the same thing every year, and I mean it from my heart. We are blessed. Not everyone that goes to church and has a pastor has a pastor like ours, and and not only do we have a good pastor, we have an excellent youth pastor. We have a, I was going to say beautiful, <laughs> but I won't say beautiful. Uh, we have an excellent music man, and we have a beautiful choir, and we have some more musicians back there that are just as pretty as he is. <laughs> but we are just one blessed group of people and I want to thank the Lord for it and we're going to do something for them we haven't zoned in on it exactly we, we've talked about a trip I'm I guess I'm too practical minded because I just hate to give someone a gift, you know, of a check. And then at the end of the year, you have to add it on to their income taxes because, you know, that day's coming. We got to pay them. So, so I hate to do that, but we are going to give them a trip. And, a, and
And if they can think of something else that we could do for them, we'll do that too. And while we're here, I will just ask them to come up here. And I know the last oh, month or so, it has been, um, and it's not even really over yet, but has been hard on our pastor. It's hard when you lose people you love, people that are part of your family. And Dwayne and I talk about it often, you know, we're not that cute little 17 year old that married a 19 year old anymore. We are now the ones that people look to when they look for someone that's supposed to be able to take care of things. And I know that it's hard for our pastor when he loses part of his people. And I, I just encourage you to pray for him and pray for Kim because they're not them cute little seventh graders either right now. <laughs> but I just want to say that we love them and, and just make an extra point to tell them how much you appreciate them. And go ahead and come up here, Miss Tabry and Mr. Brandon. Here's your card, and we love you. also have Miss Stephanie that's you she takes care of our children and let me tell you she's got a job and we want to honor her today too and thank her for all she does for our kids and Here's our little beautiful music man. <laughs> and Miss Mallory takes care of our young kids too. Takes care of our children's church and we appreciate her. And she does youth too. She's doing something all the time. But she's young, she can do that. So we love you. Hey, Brandon and Tabor, if you guys will step here. And then Chase and Lindsay and Brandon and Kaylee, you guys can come up here too. And hey, if Chasen and Embry and Brooklyn and Weston, if you guys are in here, we all come down here too. So, Glenda said she says the same thing every year, and I know I do the same thing too, but this year, over and over again, in the last couple of weeks, I've just had Noah and Moses. That's just over and over and over my head, Noah and Moses, Noah and Moses. And so I've kind of looked into it, and I'm like, what, is, what does I have to do? What do I need to say? What's this about? But looking at the story of Noah, and Noah was chosen by God, and he was given directions so that his family might be saved. Moses, on the other hand, uh, it was something that I read this week that I thought was kind of ironic. He was never called a leader. But 38 times he's referred to as God's servant or the Lord's servant. Never a leader, but always a servant. And reading through the story of, in Exodus and about the Israelites, it wasn't always easy. But I had read something this morning that said it's amazing to see that over and over and over again, the Israelites fought Moses, tried to argue with him, tried to just discourage. And they, they weren't the most supportive people. But over and over and over again, Moses kept on praying and he kept on interceding for those people. And I got a little emotional this week when I watched that video because I told Brandon when he showed me, I said, that just sums up our pastor. He's there. He's there. 
sometimes it may not even be physical. And I tell you what, the man's almost physically always there. Every time you need him, he's walking through that door. He's walking in that room. And uh, But he's always there because we don't see all the times that he spends in this sanctuary or in his office walking up down these aisles and praying for each and every one of us. And I mean, just the he can call people's names out. There's times that I'm like, okay, now they said over here. Now who was that? And he he knows, and he knows if you're not here. And he's just he's always going to the throne on our behalf. But in in Exodus chapter 17, we see a, a battle take place, and we see Moses as a leader of the Israelites stand up. And basically, if he can hold up his arms, they're in they're in good shape. But the minute that his arms start to fail, the minute he gets weak then the army starts to get weak. And so you see two people jump up and you see two people hold him up and they're supporting Moses to make sure that that battle is won. Moses could have left the soldiers, but he stayed with them. And that's exactly the kind of pastor we have. He could walk away, but he stays. He stays in those moments that we need him most. And like Linda said, it's not always easy. I've watched him at funerals grieve sometimes as hard as the family is. And I've seen him step to the side and while people are viewing and take a minute to himself because that's a precious saint that he knows has supported him. And who's going to take that person's place? Who's going to step up and be that person? You know, the modern day pastor, there's the qualities of Noah and Moses that are still needed. They need the trust and obedience of Noah, but they need the faithfulness and the spirit of service that Moses had. But you know, their purpose is no longer the same because in Noah's day, this group of people right here is all that man would have had to have worried about. He just needed to get his family on the boat. That was his only instruction. When Moses came along, Moses had a little bit larger of a group to get to care of, but it was still that group. But today, our mission field is larger than it's ever been. And God has placed this pastor and his wife and this family in our lives to lead us for such a time as this. It's no longer just about getting his family to the boat, but it's about getting me and my family on the boat, getting you and your family on the boat. It's not even just about this congregation. It's about helping us, equipping us to be the ones to go out and help get people on that boat. You know, every time I, I see something on Facebook or I hear about the great things that, that God's doing in Kyoto, and I think I can hear the heart of my pastor saying just one more. Every time I see something about something that great is going on at Poto Calvary, and once again, I can, I can hear the heart of my pastor saying, hey, that was one more. Because it wasn't just about those churches or about this church when we made those decisions. It wasn't just about this church when he went to God in prayer about it. It was about getting more people on that boat. When I see a room full of inmates walk in and tears begin to stream in a county jail, I hear the heart of my pastor saying, just one more. When I see pictures of people ministering to the homeless and providing food to those who may not have a meal that day or maybe just need a little extra food or maybe need a little extra support, all these things that we see on Go Night, once again, that's the heart of our pastor that's saying, just one more. And that's why we're here. That's why his family's here. That's why we're here. We're beyond blessed to have a pastor that has that heart of Noah and the heart of Moses that's leading us through this battle. But when they get tired and weary, we need to be the ones to support this family. We need to lift them up and we need to pray and we need to fast. I'll end with this. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 7 says, Remember your leaders who taught you the word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow the examples of their faith. This, this pastor hates the service. I say that over and over and over every year. This is his, it's most awkward. He dreads it. Uh, he just does not do it. But biblically, we're supposed to honor those. And I can't think of a more deserving family than the one that's up here right now. To follow their example because we have quite the example in front of us. Because see, this time around, it's not about just getting people on the boat. It's about building a kingdom. And together we share that mission with him. Together we're going to back you up to fulfill that mission in anything that we can do. You know, I say this every year too, but he gets so nervous when I get the mic because he thinks I'm going to be up here forever. I want to be short. But Pastor Appreciation Day eight years ago was actually our first service. And it, it just every year is just such an honor to remember the time that God brought us here. But a few days before that service, we met with um, our pastors in his office in the old sanctuary. And I remember we pulled out that night and I looked at Caleb 
We had a three-month-old baby. We have a three-month-old baby again, but it's a different one. Uh, We had a three-month-old baby, and I said, no matter what is in the books for me and you, those are the pastors that are supposed to lead our kids. Because in one hour, I saw the heart of our pastor that it's not just about the adults, and it's not just about the youth, and it's not just about the children. It is from the one-day-old church member all the way through. His heart beats for all of them. We are not a babysitting service. His desire, he fasts and prays and is on his face before God just as much for your kids and your grandkids to have the same experience in that room as we do in here and to be able to come in on Sunday nights and not be out of place. To not not understand what's going on because his desire is that the exact same thing we're experiencing, they're experiencing. And I'm so thankful for pastors and for his family who, who have bought into that. And I pray that we buy into that. So this morning, I'm going to ask that you just stand really quick. Uh, I heard someone say this week, what informs you, forms you. Well, this is where we're getting our information from. And I thank God for it every day. I thank God every day that these are the people who are forming my family. So let's just pray for them. Just stretch your hand this way. We're going we're gonna to lift their arms this morning. We're going to give them rest this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we call on you this morning. God, we pray that you bless our pastors. God, that you bless their family. Lord, from the top to the bottom, God, in their bodies, in their physical. God, I pray that you give them healing, that you give them restoration. God, that they have rest and peace and comfort. God, that you be with them in their homes. God, that their homes would be filled with your presence and aroma of your presence. God, that would just be on them at all times. God, we pray, Lord, for their finances. We pray that you bless them. God, that they may be a blessing. Lord, we pray. Pray, Lord, for a new vision. God, we pray for a stronger heartbeat, God, that they would hear from the throne room. Lord, we pray, God, that they would have wisdom and direction. God, we pray that as a congregation that we would come together, God, and that we would buy in and that we would be willing to come and hold their arms up. God, that we would be willing to go and make disciples. God, that we would be willing to to get on board with them to see your kingdom advance. God, I pray that you be there for them in each and every way possible. God, give them everything that they need. God, let them feel your love. God, let them feel your spirit. God, I pray that this is just the beginning. Beginning, God, that their best days are ahead of them. God, that that seed that you gave, God, when you gave him a seed, you saw a harvest. And I pray, God, that you would just use them to overcome, God, and to see that take place in this season. In Jesus' precious name. Let's give our pastors a hand. This isn't my um, comfort zone, but I want to honor my pastor. Um, I've had so many people over the years, they would say, um, man, just having Brian there, just having him there. And I realized that when my mom had had her stroke, and I just had him there. And in the middle of the night, he would pray over her. I'd wake up, and, and I honor him. Everything that they said on the video about him, it's true. It's true at our residence. It's exactly what they said, and I honor him today. Man, this is uncomfortable, especially while I feel like the Lord wants me to share with you for the next two minutes. Uh, Number one, let me say, we love this church. Uh, this is where we want to be until God is through with us. But I'll, can I just share my heart and just be honest with you for a minute, too? The last year and a half, it has drove me crazy because physically I can't do what I used to do. I used to be able to run to Oklahoma City, Tulsa, and Fort Smith, and go back to Fort Smith and go to Poto. And, not, and it, was, it seemed like to be no big deal. And I had an elder man that told me for years, you've got to take a day off, and I never did for years. I, 
And I'll, I'll just be totally honest with you. The last year and a half, I hadn't been able to go like I want to. I still go all I can, but I just, my, I just can't. And it drives me crazy, and I have sought the Lord. Lord, what's your will for this church? God, I, I, I want to do, be in your perfect will. And, Lord, if there's somebody younger in the wings, Lord, just tell me. And the Lord has, I believe, shared with me the vision to you just keep plowing until I tell you different. So I'm plowing, but I'm plowing in a different way. Now, I've got to use more wisdom, and I've just got to be like always, Lord, what do you want? Because that's what matters. Amen? Because one thing, I, this, is, this is my heart. I want to be here every day I'm supposed to be, and not one day longer than I'm supposed to be. Where I've watched many churches and situations, and churches go through good times and tough times, and uh, since COVID, it, it's been a tough time. But thank God, I've seen a core of people rise up and get closer to the Lord and, and seeing things happen. But I want to see more, don't you? Because there's a great harvest. So I'm just telling you, I want to play my role. Because one day when me and Kim's not pastoring here anymore, I want to go to Victory Worship Center if you'll let us. I want to I wanna be the Brother Langley that comes to prayer meeting and call him on the name of the Lord. I want to be the, the person that one day is supporting another pastor. Say, I don't want to be the guy that God's got to kill to get out of the way. I want God's perfect will, and I want, him for, want it for you and your family. God may bless you. Church, there's so much more that God has for us. Let us pursue it in the name of the Lord. And I just had to share my heart with you because I feel guilty because I can't be everywhere like I used to be. But I promise you I will do my best. And you pray for your pastor. Hey, if he just gives me more energy, I'll receive it in Jesus' name, and I'll run like I used to run. Amen. Thank you, choir. I'm going to preach. If you're visiting today, I promise you this doesn't happen very often. When I got to my office Monday morning, God never gives me a message on Monday morning. I, 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 I love getting a message early. Uh, I mean, it just began to come to me. But I also realize when God gives me a message on Monday, every time he's ever done it, Sister Sharon Dodd, we love you. Glad you're here. Uh, it really means it's going to be a crazy week, and this week has been a crazy week. But the Lord laid on my heart in a strong way. It matters who has the keys. It matters who has the keys. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to preach your word today. I'm so thankful, Lord, that you have the keys, Lord, available for us to go forward in you. And I pray, Lord, during the next few moments, Lord, you would give us a word for this hour. God, let us speak it in boldness. Let us speak it clearly. Let us speak it from you. And, Lord, let it be received and let it change our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. The church said, amen. In the natural realm, there are some keys that I need daily. I mean, some keys, uh, if I go out to get my vehicle, I've got to have a key to my truck, or nowadays it's not even a key, it's a fob. I've got to have a key to get into church. I've got to have a, a key to my house because my wife locks the door still. And you or my kids having these keys does not do me any good. I need the keys to them. Spiritually, God has keys for everyone. And for everything we face in life, there's a key that God has for us that we can go forward and not backwards. Keys that open doors to revelation. Keys that open doors to power and wisdom and anointing and favor. Keys to also lock doors that we have no business going through 
Somebody say amen. God doesn't hide his keys from us. So when we look in the right places, in the Word of God, in the presence of God, in, in the counsel of godly people, we find what we need. But the question on this Sunday morning is how bad do we want the keys? Do we want our life to change? Do we want to be delivered from a hateful spirit? Do we want to be delivered from a pornography? Do we really want our marriage to get better? Do we really want the keys? Why do we think we can find the keys to life anywhere else but from our Creator, God Almighty? But sometimes we think we'll find the keys somewhere else, or maybe, again, maybe we don't want the keys. I heard the story one time how, how uh, some kids were, they were out looking, and they were looking under this porch light for something, and they'd look for a long time, and little Billy said, Johnny, are you sure you lost it here? He said, no, I didn't lose it here, I, but this is the only place there's light. And that's the way the world is today. They're looking for hope in their government, looking for hope everywhere else. They're looking for the key uh, of love, uh, but there's only one place to find the good keys, and I, that's at the feet of Jesus Christ. Hear this this morning. No matter where we lost our passion for life, no matter where we lost our love for God, no matter where we lost our wisdom and our strength, was it in a fight or was it in a season of lukewarmness, in a moment of yielding to temptation? It really don't matter where we lost it. If we'll just remember where we can find life again, I, and that's through the keys I, that God has in his word for us. In life, wouldn't it be nice if we, every time we lost something, it always ended up to, at the same spot? I mean, you know, just just imagine with me. You guys that's over uh, 55, imagine with me, okay? You lose your keys, you lose your phone, you lose whatever, and somehow supernaturally it all goes back to one area in the house on a certain table, and when we lose something, we can go back there, and there it is. Wouldn't that be nice? Anybody started out on Monday morning and you can't find nothing? Well, this morning... Again, I'm going to say it over and over and over. We're so blessed because everything we need, we really know where it's at. Amen? Everything we need is in, in Jesus Christ. Everything we need is through his perfect love that has set us free. Go me to Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. Jesus said these words. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. What a bold proclamation he made. Revelation chapter 1, verse 17 and 18. Here's John, and he's on the Isle of Patmos, and, and John says, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. In other words, uh, John had, had been beat. He'd been bold. He, he's on the Isle of Patmos. Uh, there's nobody around him. He's in a tough situation. And Jesus says to him, fear not. I am the first and the last. But look at verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. It matters who has the keys. I said it matters who has the keys. If I don't have the keys to my vehicle, I'm not going anywhere very fast because I can't walk fast and I can't walk long. If I don't have Jesus spiritually, I cannot go anywhere because the Word of God tells us plainly, without Him, we can do how much? Nothing. Who has the keys does matter. In politics, and the Holy Spirit gave me these notes, so you just argue with God. In politics, the Democrats have had the keys to the White House, the Congress, and really even the Senate the last two years. 
They can blame everybody else for what's going on in America, but they have had the keys. But we want to look to blame everybody. If I let my 10-year-old grandson drive my vehicle to Fort Smith and he had a wreck and someone gets hurt bad, who's going to jail? I am. Why? Because I allowed that to happen. America needs to wake up. We really don't need to even blame those who are in the Senate, in the House, or in the White House. It's really our fault because we put them there. I'm not saying you did. I'm saying America has. Jesus realized without him having the keys to death and hell, we would be at Satan's whim. We would be at Satan's disposal. So he lived. He came to earth. And he lived a sinless life. He allowed the world to crucify him. He allowed them to nail him to the cross. But he left the grave after three days with the keys of death and of hell. Thank God he has the keys today. What if Satan had the keys today? We would all spend eternity with him in hell. It matters who has the keys. See, when we're living according to the Word of God, when we're walking in the Spirit of God, we have the keys to destroy the work of the enemy, the keys to win the battle over temptation, the keys uh, to stain on the narrow path that leads to eternal life. But if we get lazy spiritually and lay the keys down, Satan immediately picks them up. All my Andy Griffin fans, doesn't it drive you crazy when Barney puts them in, puts them in jail, locks the door, and puts those keys right there? Barney, what are you doing, Barney? These are evil people. Drives me crazy. Barney, take the keys. I believe the Lord looks at us sometimes when we begin to wander away from him. Why did you leave the keys right there? Take them with you. They're precious. Keep on living by them. There's more that you can do. I could take you to higher heights, but you got to keep the keys. Got to have them. I've got to have them. You need them in every part of your life, like I do also. The New Testament church was born in the upper room. Jesus had told his followers to go and wait for the promise. And one thing they did right led to another key and another key. 120 went, and the Bible says they waited. They used the key of obedience. They said, Lord, you told us to go, so we're going. And while there, they spent time in repentance and prayer and, and fellowship. So they received another key, the, the key of unity, to spend 10 days together. Or to stay there 10 days in one mind and one accord, uh, they would need a, another key. They would need a key of focus. They, they would need a key of perseverance. Uh, and they received it and they used it to spend those 10 days. Jesus had made them a promise. 380 didn't see the value of the promise, but the 120 on, on the day of Pentecost, uh, they received uh, the keys of boldness and power. Why? Because they used the other keys that they had. Today we must use uh, what we have. I hear it all the time. Brother Fouts, I don't know what to do. Uh, well, yes, we do. We know we should pray. We know we should confess our sins. We know we should be in the Word of God. We know we should worship Him. And when we do those things, uh, there's the other keys that we need in front of us. A lot of our problems come from ourselves. How much does he love you today? He loves you so much that he said, there's no way I'm going to let Satan decide your future. I'm going to go pay a prize, a big prize, that you can make your decision 
whether you spend eternity in heaven or hell. You can make your decision whether you walk in the power of his might or you're weak and feeble spiritually. You get to make the decision. Why? Because I love you and I have the keys and they're available to you. It's good news, isn't it? It's good news. Why? Because it matters who has the keys. Now, I ask you this morning, in in your personal life, uh, uh, who has the keys? Is Satan making the calls? Is he holding the keys? Uh, Are you in bondage? Uh, Are you free today? Uh, Walking in the power of his might, his love. Don't you wish it? Like some places there was a master key for everything. You know, not just a key to this door and this door. I wish there was one key for the whole church. I really do. It'd be nice. I wish there was one key for my house, my car, just everything one key. I had it tied on my arm somehow. But I have quoted the scripture so many times here, and you know which one I'm fixing to quote. I believe there is a master key that leads to the other key. That no matter what you're facing today, whether it's financial, physical, whatever, but Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We cannot overlook any word on this, but seek ye what? First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then, Say the word then. Oh, we can get to that place where we can say then. We've sought him. We haven't looked at our own agenda. It's not about us, but it's about the kingdom of God. Then all these other things will be added unto you. Why did he come? Go and defeat Satan because he wanted the keys that he could give them to us. Hallelujah. Stand with me this morning. Every one of us will die one day when the Lord tarries. We'll take our last breath on this earth. And we'll leave here with the key to eternal life, with the blood of Jesus covering our sin. Or we'll leave here without the key. If we leave here without the key, there'll be nothing to look forward to. For throughout eternity, we'll be separated from God, from hope, in a place called hell. This morning, if you don't have the key to eternal life, if Jesus Christ is not your Savior and Lord, if he's not number one in your life, I challenge you today to repent of your sins and ask him to come into your heart. Every head's bowed and every eye closed. You say, Brother Faust, I need the key to eternal life today. Maybe I've once known God, but I've strayed from him. Maybe I've never, you've never known him. But you say today, I want that key. I want a new life in him. I want to be saved. I want the key. Well, I want to know beyond a shadow of doubt. When I leave this world, I'll spend eternity in heaven. If that's you, would you raise a hand this morning? Say, that's me. Yes. Anyone else? Yes. Anyone else? I need the key to eternal life. It's your decision. Jesus has the key. Do you want it? You're here on this Sunday morning. You say, Brother Fouts, I need wisdom over a situation so bad. I need the key. I need to make a tough decision. Did you slip your hand up this morning? I want the key. I want God's will. I'm going to lay my will down. I want God to tell me what to do. Yes. You're here on this Sunday morning. You say, Brother Fouts, financially, nobody's looking around. Nobody's looking around. Financially, I need the key. I'm struggling. And I'm willing to listen to God. Would you slip a hand up? Yes. 
to Brother Fouts. I'm struggling in a relationship. I need the key. I need help. You slip up your hand. I don't know how to work at this situation. Yes, yes, yes. There's keys. There's keys available right now in this altar. If you raised your hand to any of these, I want you to come quickly. If you should have raised your hand, come on. There's keys up here this morning for you. Hallelujah. Devil, I come against you in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, your word plainly says that you have the keys. Now, Lord, these people are coming to you and they're calling upon your name this morning. So I come against you, devil. You don't have the keys. But no, we're not going to give them to you. But we're going to see the power, the anointing, and the favor of God. Why? Because he that is in us is greater than he that's in the world. Christians, would you come and help me pray with these this morning? Let's make an altar. Oh, hallelujah. Let's call upon the name above every name, the name of Jesus.
thank you, Jesus. Choir, would you come up here and sing your song, and we'll leave. But I feel led, y'all, practice it, and I, I believe it's meant for today. So, choir, would you come up here quickly? Would you stand with us and let's just worship as they sing a song? Remember the announcements. Hallelujah, let's go forward in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord.
saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. He laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. Church, that's what Jesus wants you to hear right now. Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Would you slip your hands towards heaven right now? Can we just celebrate that he has the keys? Hallelujah. 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 It matters who has the keys. The one who loved us enough to die for us has the keys. Oh, somebody ought to shout this morning. He has the keys. Oh, since he has the keys, let us walk in the power of his might, his freedom, his love. Mm. Let us use that master key found in Matthew 6, 33. Let us seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things will be added unto us. God bless you. We love you more than you know. See you tonight at 530.